Okay, that is both way more exciting and way more boring than it looks. Let's break it down. Take a regular old piano. What notes have you got on it? A through G, rinse and repeat. Simple, right? Right. Okay, now let's just not rinse and repeat and continue with the alphabet. Boom, done. That's it, you can spell anything now. And I, once again, have finished my video in 30 seconds. You can leave. Unless you wanna see how I use this method to turn a poem into a song. Actually, like three, three poems and three songs. And at the end of this video, we can write a song with your name. I did code a whole app just for this one single video, so roll the intro. <clears throat> My name is Andrew Seco, and I am a story glutton. I don't just love consuming stories though, I love making them. I'm a workhorse, so I'm creating basically nonstop, and all of my free time is just story time in one way or another. I'm like one of those Dungeons and Dragons people that makes multi-layered maps for towns you only go to for a single session. I'm like one of those people who's writing an entire novelized backstory for a single character in my open world RPG game. I'm like one of those people who makes a video about a poem, but instead of just talking about the poem, I made three super weird tracks to go along with it, and then shared like three seconds of each. Now, like any investigative journalist who watches random video essays online, I can understand if you have some questions, the uh, W5, if you will. Who? Me. What? The three poems that I taught- When? In my last video. Where? Home? Is this a trick question? Why? Well, well, now that's a good question. I think names are perfect adjectives. First names, I mean. Last names are a little bit more complicated. They're a lineage to be proud of or grow out of. But I'm focused on first names here. Let's say you meet someone. You're invited by your friend to a local concert and you ask, who's all gonna be there? And they say, you don't know anyone that's there. Which is true. And when you arrive at the indie concert in the speakeasy style basement of your local coffee shop, you're surrounded by energized electrons of human beings buzzing through their words like what you imagine playing trumpet feels like. They are the fanfare. And maybe you exchange names, but it's loud, and the feedback from the microphone is competing with the tuning of the guitar, and it's loud, and you just, you, you just missed the names. You missed all the names. But then you're watching the band, and they're kind of amazing, because uh, they kind of suck, but everyone's dancing anyways. But you don't dance, because dancing requires you to be a little bit more vulnerable than you're willing to be right now, but your friend's friend is dancing and it is terrible the band is rough around the edges sure but the dancing oh it's awful and it's the best thing you've ever seen this person is by far one of the coolest people you are ever going to meet and their decision to do the shopping cart dance move in the middle of this indie band's edm cover of nirvana's heart-shaped box sets that in stone and when you're all talking after the show, eating tater tots, because I guess that's what they sell around here, you want to tell your friend's friend how absolutely freeing it was to see them dance. You want to tell them how there's no way to live vicariously through their movement, but you never felt like your skin was your own until they did the shopping cart. You want to tell them what? That they're awesome? No, you want to tell them everything, but there's no way to tell them everything. There's just no way to say what that meant to you in any sort of regular functioning human way. So you introduce yourself again and you say, Hi, I'm Andrew Ian. What's your name? And you call them by their name. And with it, you've captured them. If not for a moment, they look at you when you call them by their name. And in that moment, you've captured them entirely. You couldn't write a novel that explains 
everything about someone. You could make a film about it. There's no story form long enough but life itself. So the only thing that encapsulates someone in full, the only thing that captures them, is their name. And if you're lucky, they have a middle name too. That's two perfect adjectives. It is everything that they are. It's everything that they represent and everything that you love about them. Two perfect adjectives. Of course, that isn't always enough. There are some people that are so special, so much, that the compliments and adoration and adjectives run out and over of the cup of their names. And if two full names can't hold how much someone means to you, you make more. Or at least, I make more. I make nicknames to bring people closer to me and to give them another perfect adjective. And the more you get, the more I'm saying. And all of this is really just to say, I like names. I am such a story glutton. When I started my last video, I knew I wanted to talk about Gottfried Ben, but I had no idea where the video would take me. I had no idea that I'd be researching Michael Hoffman as much as I did, and I just had no clue what the scope of the project would be. I clearly tend to bite off more than I can chew. I have jaw problems. That's not a joke, it's just a poignant, relevant truth. Half of the point of my online presence is just to learn to finish projects for once in my life. Put a pin in them, say that they're done forever. Otherwise, I tend to go down rabbit holes. So I didn't know that I'd be writing a song for Gottfried Ben. But when I did start writing the song, it wasn't unreasonable nor unnatural for me to start with his name. I've actually done the piano note lining up with the alphabet thing before tons of times. I've been doing it for years. It's just that this time I really went all out. So starting's easy. You line up the letters in their names to their name in notes. B-E-N-N -N becomes B-E-G-G. -G. So you pick a basic B major chord and then E comes right after. N is a G and then you just hold the G again and it's boring. It's boring. And all of that sounds kind of too triumphant, right? Like for a poem named Threat, that's a little too happy-go-lucky. So, spice time. Let's get some consistent notes in there. I can't really explain why, but somewhere along the lines, maybe when I was trying to learn gospel music or some Wolfpack song, I noticed that they try to keep as many similar notes between chords as possible, or at least within the same range. It keeps the sound feeling strong and consistent, and it really emphasizes those little musical changes. So, consistent notes. The B and the E and the G have the B already, but, a B6 and an E add 9 have all but one note in common, so let's go for that smooth move. And in the interest of using more sixth in all of my music and its sweet, sweet tones, let's do a G6. And then, because I'm complicated and I want a really strong transition with a satisfying return home, let's get nasty with a G diminished. Seventh, so that we keep as many similar notes as we possibly can. This hot mess of a name is starting to sound better. Mm but I can do better than that. Consistent range is a part of consistent notes, so let's invert these chords and play them so that they all share the same high B, so that we're not just playing the same note, but playing within the same octave. Okay, we got our chords. Now the only thing left is to funkifies our bass. The chords are all the same, but just changing the bass note really brings out different tones in all of these chords and makes it super fun. So that's all I had at first, just this chord progression. Actually, for all of these songs, I was really initially just planning to record these chord progressions and putting them in the background of the video. But, um, you know that thing about how I bite off more than I can chew? And in my defense, my producer for these songs, Joe Barnes, did not stop me. He's a good friend and wanted to help me, and I am a terrible project manager.
So I said, Joe, we've got two days to record and three days to mix, master, and ship it. And he's like, cool, but um, what are we doing for the melody? So you take the poem and you do the whole piano alphabet thing. You try and spice it up a bit with a little bit of timing and some modulation. Oh, that was a pretty important thing too. Since this whole method doesn't account for sharps and flats, sharps and flats are totally fair game as the same letter. So that's a good way to cheat. Like how E sharp is just an F, it counts. And it's fair game to bend pitch, so long as the original first note lines up with the letter. And any other melody that comes in has to be in a separate tone so that you can distinguish between what counts as the poem and what is just some noodling. It was quite a few rules. Here's my reenactment of the conversation that we had multiple times. Here are all of the rules. Absolutely none of them are conducive to making music in any way whatsoever. But if we break any of the rules, we'll be lying to everyone who ever listens to this song. And I will not be a liar. Okay, yeah, no, that's super cool. Um, I like it, um, but you're the one making the rules, right? So it's okay if you like bend them a little, right? But it's dishonest. No one's ever gonna know. I will know. I respect you, and I respectfully suggest that you just get over it. I will get over nothing. I will bend no constructs but my own cumbersome, convoluted, cataclysmic cacophony of characteristically charismatic. I will make the song. Thank you. Also, three. three. It's, it's three songs. Thank you. Okay, so we had the backtrack, we made the melody. I noodled around to make a bridge of sorts and Joe refined it and Joe refined all of these things and um, then we had a song. So the method was solidified, but that was the easiest song to do because I am impossible and I refuse to compromise on any of my impossible schemes. They always work, they just take time, which of course we didn't have because I only gave us two days to record it. Quick note, Michael Hoffman was the translator of Gottfried Ben's poem. So let's take Hoffman and do the whole Piano mixeroo. H O F M A N N becomes A A F F A G G. And with a chord progression that simple and clustered and boring, I relied heavily on a walking bass note to the point where I didn't even modify any of the chords except for the final G, which I turned into a G diminished, just like Ben's song. That felt like an homage in a weird way, which is poetically resonant since Hoffman worked on Ben's song. But we're not even to the poetry. First, we gotta get to that bass line. And with a lot of noodling and some strange musical choices, we ended up with this. And then we've got a chord progression, right? Wrong, actually, super wrong. Making this chord progression was the hardest part of the entire project. That entire first video, that entire first website launch, logo launch, Patreon launch, everything. This chord progression was the hardest part of it all. Some of the more astute observationalists among you might have noticed that Hoffman's chord progression is only seven letters. See, Ben is an easy chord progression because it's short, sweet, and, you know, like most music, it's in the time signature of 4-4. Four, four. That's four beats over four measures, rinse and repeat. Not four over seven, which sounds really confusing and uncomfortable to listen to. But because I refuse to give up on creative visions due to things like complication or practicality, we ended up with a seven chord chord progression that I would not scrap. 
the trick I figured was to try and normalize it by putting it in the context of a song that was 4-4 four, four, or 8-8 eight, eight sounding in this instance. So, as one does, you noodle. All of this makes an absolutely intolerable chord progression blend in, when in reality, we've got a shifting one on each measure. But that shifted one is coming closer and closer to the original loop, which means that if you wait and time it just right, you hit it right on the nose. That is the poetry of Hoffman. That the seven chord progression is literally mathematically translating through the song. And to top it all off, the melody was comprised of Hoffman's translation of Gottfried Benn's Drohung. And just turn up that electro vibe, and it all sounds a little nicer. I gotta level with you. The last song was my name and it just wasn't as important as the other ones to me. Plus, I had just written two really cool song concepts with Ben's chord progression sounding really satisfying and solid to me and Hoffman's musical stubbornness and ingenuity feeling like a big accomplishment. So I just, eh, I didn't bring my A game. Actually, that was the problem. See, because C-E-C-O translates into C-E-C-A. And that just feels so boring. So I made this. I was like, Joe, I got nothing. And Joe was like... Somehow he finished all three of the songs in the allotted time, which is incredible because I hadn't even launched my Patreon yet so that I could share the songs. And the craziest part of it all is that Joe made them really, really good. Oh, and what poem did he use for the melody of my song? My silly little sales pitch poem all the way at the end of the video. My terrible parody of Threat. And in a way, the song almost sounds like a parody of the other two, but hey, it's not so bad. So I made this whole idea and I wrote all those songs and then what? Oh, hey, I, uh, I finished your app. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Andrew, did you create an entire app just for this one video, even though you've already created a full video's worth of content? And to that, I would say, you're starting to ask some oddly specific questions that I'm just gonna completely ignore. Let me show you this cool thing that I made. I call it Alpha Key, cause of the alphabet. And you get the rest. Let's look it all over, okay, here? So if you don't know what's happening already from the whole entire video I just did, Here's a little question mark. And this question mark will tell you everything that you need to know, like all the cool little functions that you can do. See, this app works really well on computer and your phone. Um, well, less on your phone because you don't have as much room to see the beautiful alpha key piano. So on a computer keyboard, you can play any single letter to play a note. But if you hold shift, it'll go up half a note or 
control to go down half a note. Because, like I said earlier, the half notes kind of don't count or they count as the same thing. However you want to think about it, think about it that way. So when you're typing, you're typing up words in the top here. So I can show you that. Ready? Let's type something. Let's type uh, hello again because I, I just love how it sounds. It's a fun little thing, right? So the O can be either a sharp or a flat. And it all works out smoothly just holding that, right? And so this G sharp or A flat is good as either N sharp or O flat. And that works out that way. So <laughs> instead of trying to spell hell no like I did, you can press space and clear that out. But if you like a word that you type out, like uh, defenestration, you can just press enter and save that down below. Now this down below is a sequence that you can play. Let me play it for you. Check it out. So next time you're throwing someone out of a window, you can just sing that little ditty to yourself. How helpful is that? Now, if you're using a mouse, you can also click different things like the keyboard. So you can click the keyboard and spell out hi. But let's say you want hi to be your chord progression, right? You can click on the letters in the top here and they'll pop up on the left. So let me click over I here. And now we've got a two over two chord progression that spells H. I. Now, technically, that would be an A to B chord progression. Right now, it's A major, B major, or H major, I major. But you can click through on the left here to change what kind of chord it is. So it goes from major to minor to sixth to seventh to diminished and back to major again. So if we want to have a fancy little high song, you can do, let's do something like H6 to H. Mm, let's do minor. Why not? Let's hear how it sounds by clicking on this left little little switch right here. And then you can you can play over it. Typically, if you're playing something, you want it to sound good, but it doesn't always have to. That's just the way the app works. Sometimes well, sometimes it's what I'm doing now. But instead of reading every single word in the whole instruction manual here, let's just go and make something. So first, let's start with the chord progression. Since I don't want the word hello to be a part of the chord progression, I'm going to press space to get rid of the word up there. And I'm going to type in something with four or eight letters to make a nice solid sounding chord progression. Um, how about alpha key? Beautiful. Gotta love finishing with that Y with that nice little bling. Okay. So now to make it into a chord progression, you'll click on the letters. They will signify that they've been clicked by turning blue and they will populate in the left there as chords. And you can scroll on the left to see all of the keys and their chord type. So if you want to change what chord type they are, you can go ahead and click on them and cycle through all of the different kinds of chords. So I'm going to keep it major because I have no idea what this will sound like, but let's spice it up a little with, with some sevenths and some sixes. And I always love a good diminished right before returning back to the one. So let's do that because it might sound strange and that's the fun of it all. Now, I don't want alpha key as a part of the sequence that I'm going to make, so let's make something else. Let's say um, I made this app for you. Ooh, that Y is spicy. So let's go ahead and uh, we've got this going and we can start the chord progression and start the sequence after if we just want to jam on the chord progression for a bit and hear how it sounds. That diminished chord really paid off. That was really good. Uh, 
I love this. I'm feeling it. Oh my goodness. I know I'm supposed to be like working in, on, on doing the video right now, but like, damn, okay. Technically, you can also use MIDI on this keyboard, but um, it's not its not always perfect, and that's okay. I told you we would write a song with your name, and I meant it. Let's make the chord progression with the word name. Layer on top some noodling spelled out by the word your a few times, and uh, yeah. Feeling it, but um, we can write a better poem than that. Like a willow round the bend, from my lips around my head, rest the secret. guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed the concepts we talked about and I hope you liked my song because that was only half of it. If you want to hear the full song, it's available for $3 on my Patreon. And if you also want me writing poems for you, then that's another tier that's there. Guys, I would love to hear your thoughts about this insane app that I created. I would love to hear what poems or phrases or sounds that you'd like to hear from it and how you'd use it. I am fueled by passion, so naturally, I want to hear about yours, especially if it happens to be related to the Alpha Keys app. As always, I want to collaborate, so tell me your ideas. Talk to me. This video has been crazy, and we jumped all over the place between so many different things, um, but I promise you, the next one? Yeah, the next one's gonna be even better. Oh, and that song you're hearing in the background right now is comprised from the words like, subscribe, notification bell, and Patreon, because those are all the things that make it easier for me to do all of this, whatever it is, for you. Thanks for watching, guys.